you guys have taken some classes with Linnea or she's come to your class, but um, it, it, it's uh, it's cool. You have to have permits to do it. You can't just like throw up a net. Um, you have to be federally yeah. permitted to do yeah. it. So we have, I think we have 12 net lanes a year. Is anybody familiar with how bird banding works? Or so basically they put out uh, nets that are about 10 meters long and about three meters tall or four meters tall. And you connect those with aluminum, you know, you have to put them on those things right there. PVC pipes. So we have established lanes that are out here on this front loop trail. You might, if you walk down through there, you'll see they're numbered and there's little paths that go into the, where the net lanes are. So the <coughs> nets are like like half inch microfilament nets. They're like fish nets, only they're for birds. They're very sexy birds, let me tell you. And uh, so they, then they check the nets like every 20 minutes. And then if a bird is in the net, they uh, put the, get the bird, extract the bird from the net, put it in a soft little cotton bag, take it back to the banding station, they weigh it, they determine what sex it is, if it has a brood patch, um, they weigh it, they measure its wings, and then they put a small, generally aluminum, a uh, numbered band on its leg, uh, or steel if it's a woodpecker, um, <laughs> and then that data is put into a regional database so you can track, so we can track uh, migratory birds across the state, as well as it's into a national database. So um, when somebody recaptures a bird, you can, you know, know where it was. Know where it was. And we also recapture birds here. We. So far, I think we've captured 1,400 birds and recaptured at least a couple hundred. And that way, we can find out what birds are actually residents here um, and which birds return during migration. One of the things that was really cool uh, that we that uh, Katrina provided evidence of was um, uh, when we use our weather radar, uh, so, so the sort of um, high resolution um, radar to look for clouds and rain, the Doppler radar stuff that you see sometimes on the uh, nightly newscast. Um, people figured out a few years ago that actually with a little bit of tweaking, a little bit of uh, signal processing, you can actually not just see rain, but you can see other things. And so now we can get down to cicada sized things. So that means, um, with the, I, theoretically, I guess you do hummingbirds, but, but at least with things bigger than that, it's relatively easy. And the bigger the bird, the easier it is. And so what you saw was before Katrina came in, there's a bunch of birds, and all of a sudden all the birds disappeared. And then the, the, the storm itself blew through and all the, you know, wind and everything. And then it left, and it was like, what, like 12 hours-ish later? You know, st the storm is basically gone, and all of a sudden you just see all these birds materialize and then keep flying. So clearly the birds have been traveling. They sense the, the wind or the pressure or whatever, and they all essentially hid in the forest, in the woodlands, right, in the, in the intact vegetation. And then once the store, uh, probably a, a lot died, but still, uh, but still, then the, the, after they came up and kept going their work. So we, if we don't have these kinds of areas, they're not only important for the trees and the locals, they're also really important for things like migratory birds that, that uh, in this case, were on the edge of the Caribbean, right? So, so these birds that are coming to or from these islands, they're flying over water, no food to eat. These kind of places are really... You know, drop down, take a rest, get some get some berries or whatever it is. So it's really important for those guys. Plus, we've lost like what is it, three billion birds? Yeah. And since yeah. was it seventy? Yeah, yeah. We've lost more and more data showing data like you guys are collecting this long term, in a sense, kind of boring in and out data. But having that, we've we've seen massive crashes in bird abundances uh, and massive crashes in insect uh, abundances. Um, and if you look, so you see those stories on like. New York Times or some national news. If you actually drill down it, you'll find it's like it's an urban park in Germany, in like you know Berlin or something, or it's these random places. You're like, why is that where the data's coming from? It's because places like you guys, or groups like you guys, have picked this whatever spot because it was their neighborhood park, it was their their you know county air whatever area, and they just started monitoring it, and people kept doing it, and kept doing it, and now that's some of our most valuable data in terms of long-term change. Things. So that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, we'll see that tomorrow. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So, so it looks like it's not. It's uh, it's a strange year for uh, for the leaves. I don't, I don't get the leaves. 
I don't know if it's ever been like this. I don't think it's ever been like this. And what I don't understand if it's like, it's been so warm. I it's, mean, I know today. It's, it's probably weird, the Russians. <laughs> <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's probably Putin. I think it was probably Putin. <laughs>